So welcome to this video, which is going to be on Seventh-day Adventism and a very well-known and infamous statement made by Ellen White, and I'll show you that book here in a minute. And it's on, uh, just in short, it's on the, uh, what I call the amalgamation quote um, that she is um, rather well-known for. Uh, so uh, this video here is just going to be specifically about that, about Seventh-day Adventism. And um, we're going to start off here first with a quote. A lot of my Adventist friends on YouTube and other places tell me, well, if you really want to understand what we believe, you've got to read our book. So I agree. Read your book. So let me just quote from your book. I'm quoting from page 216. I want to really nail down the authority of Ellen White. A lot of Adventists don't like the fact that when you bring up something about Ellen White that is controversial, like we're going to do here, the first thing they do is distance themselves from Ellen White. But if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, you can't do that. Um, period. I don't care what kind of Adventist you are, extraordinarily conservative or liberal. Your beliefs are from this woman. So here's what the, uh, the book here says about Ellen White. Uh, this is the Gift of Prophecy chapter. This is the page just preceding it. It says this, Ellen White, as the Lord's Messenger, her writings are a continuing and authoritative source of truth, which provide for the church comfort, guidance, instruction, and correction. Well, there we have it. Her writings are authority. They're used for guidance. They're used for direction. So, Let's look at some of her writings. What I have here is Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, Original Volume 3, printed off the Steam Press. And those of you that collect Seventh-day Adventist books will know that the Steam Press was a very early Adventist uh, publishing arm, and this, is eight, this was actually printed in 1864. Now, in, in this book, and this book has the amalgamation quote in it twice, um, here is what it says about the quote. Here's what we're going to be talking about. And I quote here on page 75 of this book. Every species of animal which God had created were preserved in the ark. The confused species which God did not create, which were the result of amalgamation, were destroyed by the flood. Since the flood, there has been amalgamation of man and beast, as may be seen in an almost endless varieties of species of animals and in certain races of men. It is amazing how much ink has been spilled by Adventists to explain away this quote here of Ellen White that I just read. Because in it... What Ellen White is basically saying is that there is amalgamation, mixture of man and beast, as seen, as it says, in certain races of men. It's interesting, when I show this quote to people, I don't tell them anything about it, I just open the book, I don't even tell them where it's from, I give no context, I just say, read this. And it's interesting how often people want to jump to, this is a quote about the Negro race. And so I always caution them, I say, be careful. It doesn't say race of men, it says races of men. And the quote doesn't tell us which races of men, plural, that are the amalgamation of man and beast. Well, all, all i got to say is apparently, everyone that I've showed this, this book to and got their feedback on, uh, weren't too far off. Because when this quote was published, though the, though the Review and Herald magazines that I have, and I've got all the Review and Herald magazines um, you know, from the beginning, uh, don't really tell us too much about the controversy that surrounded this quote, except that four years later, four years after this book, Uriah Smith, and those of you that are, that are Seventh-day Adventists know who uh, Uriah Smith is. He's one of your pioneer founding Seventh-day Adventist members editor of the Review and Herald at one point in time, um, decided that um, an answer needed to be given for this quote. Because apparently, just like the people I'm showing this same book to, over 100 years after it's published, people who were reading this book in 1864 when it was published came to the same conclusion and said, you're talking about 
the Negro race. So, what I found interesting was, I, I decided, I, I got, the, the, here's a book here, somewhat contemporary to, to Ellen White. It's, an, it's called An American Glossary, and it's very similar to a dictionary published in 1912. And here's what it says about amalgamation. Amalgamation. The mingling of the black and white races. That's it. Now underneath it, it does talk about the amalgamation of other races of men. But it says primarily, it's the amalgamation, it's the uh, mingling of black and white races. So it's, I think it's easy to, to see that in American thought and culture, using that word amalgamation of the white and black races. Rightly or wrongly so, that's what I think a lot of people were thinking. So when Uriah Smith came out, like I said, four years later with his response, and you're going to see it on screen here, you're going to see a photographic reproduction of the original booklet. And in this booklet, it's called The Visions of Miss White, A Manifestation of the Spiritual Gifts According to the Scriptures, 1868. Once again, Steam Press, right, very uh, you know, early uh, Adventist publishing arm. He is answering in this, you know, if you pay attention carefully and read this closely here, he's answering how amalgamation is not talking about the Negro race, like apparently many people suppose that it was. And he's very clear in the first sentence, no, we are not, we deny it, period. Very clear. But what he does go on to say in explaining this amalgamation quote is this. He goes on to say, and I'm going to list this page here because I want you to read along with me and see the whole page. He says this on the, starting on the second line on page 103. This view was given for the purpose of illustrating the deep corruption and crime into which the race fell. Even within a few years after the flood, that signal manifestation of God's wrath against human wickedness. So what's amalgamation or this view? It was to illustrate and to show the deep corruption that happened to man. So keep reading. He says, there was amalgamation. Did you see that? There was amalgamation. And the effect is still visible in certain races of men. There it is. Uriah Smith is confirming for us right there what Ellen White plainly taught in her book in 1864, The Amalgamation of Man and Beast. Uriah Smith says, there was amalgamation, and the effect is still in certain races of men. Now he's going to switch gears on us just a little bit here, and says this, mark those accepting the animals, so now we're accepting the animals. Don't look at the animals, we're really focusing on men. Mark those accepting the animals upon whom the effects of this work are visible. Just like the quote says, amalgamation of man and beast. But he says, well, we're going to accept the animals. He says, now, we have ever supposed that anybody that was called a man was considered a human. So apparently at this time, part of the argument was, against this quote by Ellen White, is that she was not only perhaps saying this quote was about the Negro race, but that perhaps there were certain humans or people who really weren't humans at that time. So that's really what he's arguing for here. He said, no, this is not about the Negro race. And number two is, uh, uh, no, we're not saying that certain people who we have customarily, et cetera, regarded as human are no longer human. So that's, that, those are his two arguments. That's it right there in a nutshell, and what he's saying. So you can continue reading with me here. The vision speaks of all these classes and races of men Yet in the face of this plain declaration, they foolishly assert that the visions teach that some men are not human beings. See, like I said, uh, they're arguing that some men are not human beings. And you're asking Smith to say, no, we are not making that. Those that we've identified as humans are humans. Then he goes on, but does anyone deny the general statement contained in the extract above? In other words, those that we have always identified as human, a part of the human race are humans. And this raid is not about Negroes. Do not um, do not mistake, in other words, Ellen White's quote for anything other than that. So he's, he's distancing himself from those two arguments right there. He said, uh, they do not. Then he goes on to say this. If they did, in other words, if you still want to make these arguments, 
you could be easily silenced by a reference to such, ca such cases as the wild bushmen of Africa, some tribes of the Hottentots, and perhaps the Digger Indians of our own country. Did you catch that? He is making an argument here that he's identifying races of men. Keep reading with me here. Moreover, naturalists affirm that the line of demarcation between the human and animal races is lost in confusion. Uh-oh. In some cases, we can't tell the line between animal and human. And he just gave us three examples where we can't tell the line between animal and human. And it's the Bushmen of Africa, the Hottentots, and the Digger Indians. He says of his own country, and I did a little research, the Digger Indians are right here in California, or where. Then he goes on to say, and I continue reading, It is impossible, as they affirm, to tell just where the human ends and the animal begins. Wow. So what do we have here? We have Uriah Smith defending Ellen White, saying this, race is, this statement is not about the Negro race. This statement is not about claiming some humans are actually inhuman. He has now taken the statement and saying, well, naturalists tell us that the line of demarcation between certain groups and animals is fuzzy. And he gives us his three examples, Bushmen of Africa, Hottentots, and the Digger Indians of California. So there's your amalgamation of man right, and beast right there, said by Uriah Smith himself. 1868, page 103, and you have it there on screen. Matter of fact, he wrote that book when he did. James White was so excited about the book that in the Review and Herald of August 25, 1868, page 160, James White says this, and you'll see it on screen. The association just published a pamphlet entitled The Visions of Miss White, a Manifestation of the Spiritual Gifts According to the Scriptures. That's what I was just reading from. It is written by the editor of the review, that's Uriah Smith, the editor of, of the uh, Review and Herald magazine. While carefully reading the manuscript, I felt very grateful to God that our people could have this able defense of those views which they so much love and prize. Boy, how much do they love and prize that view today. Anyway. And which others despise and oppose. This book is designed for a very wide circulation. There's going to be 2,000 copies, and they're going to bring it to a camp meeting that they're going to. They're so happy with this, um, the objections answered uh, a booklet that they're going to bring 2,000 copies to a camp meeting. So there it is. Amalgamation of Man and Beast is exactly like Ellen White wrote it. It's exactly how Uriah Smith defended it. He defended it saying, yes, there's been an amalgamation of Man and Beast. And he gave us three examples of amalgamation of Man and Beast. And he was clear to say that this quote by Ellen White is not about the Negro race, nor is it about claiming any other race that we've accepted as part of the human race as anything other than that. And then he goes on to give us his three amalgamation examples. That's it. That's the answer. Written while Ellen White was alive, Ellen and James traveling together in 1868 to this camp meeting, bring 2,000 copies of this book, which they are very proud of, and distribute to everybody. Wow. But does it end there? No. So what happens today? Well, with the advent of information flowing more and faster from the 1860s, 1900s, now we go to the 1950s. We go to 1951, as a matter of fact. A lot of events like to point me to this book here. Kind of comical, in a way. Ellen G. White and Her Critics by Francis Nicole, 1951. So here's the book from 1951. And in this book, uh, much like the Uriah Smith book, you know, there's a chapter on, on objections answered. There's an objection here about the amalgamation of man and beast. And what Mr. Nicole likes to do in this book, and I think is rather uh, comical, is that he wants to really parse the word amalgamation and and say well, it's, it's amalgamation of man, amalgamation of beast. It's not amalgamation of man and animal. Um, <clears throat> that's not what she meant. Well, apparently that's what she meant because that's what she wrote and that's what Uriah Smith defended. And nowhere in this 1951 book does this uh, Seventh-day Adventist scholar even adequately address, uh, define, redefine, etc., what Uri Uriah Smith wrote. There's a little footnote in this uh, a book here about what Uriah Smith wrote and said in that pamphlet we, we just read, but he really doesn't dissect the pamphlet, neither, neither agree nor disagree with what Uriah Smith wrote. Actually, he disagrees with them because that's what this book is about. This book is 
complete disagreement with the 1868 pamphlet and what he was saying. So he's basically saying that there were no, there's no mixture of man and animal producing this uh, hybrid uh, race that we can't tell, uh, which you, Uriah Smith said we can. And they're called hot and tots and wild bushmen of Africa and the Digger Indians of California. Um, he says no, it's amalgamation of man, amalgamation of beasts. And, uh, and then he also goes on to say in his defense, he goes, he searched every dictionary, and no dictionary can he find, even the Oxford English Dictionary, which is a fantastic dictionary. It's, it, it's in excess now of 25 volumes, I believe. Um, uh, fantastic resource. I have one here in, in, in my library. And he says, even, even looking in that book there, uh, the definition of amalgamation is not that of man and beast. So when I read that, I chuckled. Because a that's not the intent of a dictionary, uh, Mr. Scholar Adventist Nickel. The intent of a dictionary is to show you a general definition of a word, not to show you every usage of the word. So let me give you an example, which refutes this, this book here. Um, I did a search, and I'll show, you, I'll show you my search results on amalgamation, and the Collins Dictionary uh, came up on screen. And they give you examples of how amalgamation is currently used or has recently been used in the English language. And just two examples. One is there's an amalgamation of military units. We're taking this one military unit and combining it and mixing it with another military unit to produce something, uh, a, a, a different thing. Uh, or there's an amalgamation of books, right? I'm taking one book and combining it with another one to produce this amalgamated book. But you know, there is no definition, just like Mr. Nichols said, in the English language, it says amalgamation is the amalgamation of books. Or amalgamation is the amalgamation of military units. So by using his logic, as flawed as it is, that would mean that the amalgamation of military units is a fantasy concept that cannot exist because the dictionary doesn't define that. Or the amalgamation of books, merging two books together into one, is another fantasy concept that doesn't exist because it's not defined like that in the dictionary. So, that's the flaw in his argument. A dictionary is not there to define every usage of a word. It is to define the word, and while the usages will vary and be very diverse, as you just saw there on, on the screen. So, getting ready to wrap this up here. Let's do this. Adventists like to say this, too. They say, well, you know, it's, it's a, so it's amalgamation of man, amalgamation of beast. So I think about that for a minute. What would amalgamation of man look like? Can it, amalgamation of man, what is that? Okay, now we know amalgamation of man and beast, right? We've got the Bushmen, the Hottentots, and, and the Digger Indians. Okay, got that. But we, So we're going to go with Mr. Nichols' argument that it's amalgamation of man, amalgamation of beast. So what's amalgamation of man look like? How can man mix with man? Aren't we all the same race? Right? We're the human race. Unless, unless, unless it's this. Now, this is my argument that I'm making here, and that is this from Selected Messages, Book 2, Ellen White. Ellen White had some, of course, very particular views. Here's what she said, perhaps about amalgamation of man, is this. But there is an objection to the marriage of the white race with the black. All should consider that they have no right to entail upon their offspring that which will place them at a disadvantage. They have no right to give them as a birthright a condition which would subject them to a life of humiliation. Wow. Perhaps that's the amalgamation of man Mr. Nickel is referring to, which is this racist statement by Ellen White here. Now, in this modern printing of this book, Selected Messages, there's an extensive footnote at the bottom, and the first sentence says that while these messages were written by Ellen White in 1896 and 1912, as if that's an excuse, um, she goes on to say that her, you know, counsel on marriage, an issue of inequality, it's an essential question, it's advisability, it's not a mandate, in other words. Well, that's an interesting footnote. But let's turn the page. Let's go to 344. So she's answered an inquiry from a friend. Same issue about the uh, mixture of the black and white race intermarrying. And she says this. 
In reply to inquiries regarding the advisability of inter intermarriage between Christian young people of the white and black races, I will say that in earlier experience this question was brought before me. And the light given me of the Lord, whom? Light given her from who? The Lord. Was that this step should not be taken, for it is sure to create controversy and confusion. So, the light given her by the Lord. Wow. So, God says we shouldn't intermarry. Um, very interesting racist statement by Ellen White. And perhaps this is what, um, though not spoken, amalgamation of man would, would look like. So, my Seventh-day Adventist friends, what you have here is Ellen White, a prophet, your counselor, your authoritative source, who's not authoritative. Her visions, her statements, her teachings, her writings are just demonstrably false and contradict the Bible. Uh, I don't mean to offend any Seventh-day Adventist. I've met many Seventh-day Adventists and they are generally nice people. However, your prophet and your founders have a different position and a different view um, than, than I think we have today. So with that, I'm going to end the video and I'm going to show you this scripture verse.